Here's a fun bit of tape for you. It's the awe and the excitement of a group of people the other night watching the Percy meteor shower. Oh! Or, oh. 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 Wow, that must have been a fireball, that last one. These are people on top of Momagantic in the eastern townships, which is the highest elevation to which you can drive in this province. Our Mark Apollonio is up there late Wednesday night. We've been hearing about it since, and now it's your turn. Hi there, Mark. Hey, Jackie. How many collective expressions of astonishment did you did you actually hear? I personally heard probably three to 400, because I was up there from about 11 p.m. until 2.30 a.m., but uh, Wednesday night, Jackie, I'm, I'm proud to announce I was there at the Momagantic record-breaking night of, of all time. 843 shooting stars were counted, um, and that's compared to an average of five or 600 for a good night during the Perseid meteor shower that happens every August. Okay, and it happens because? It happens because, Jackie, each year on its orbit, the Earth will pass through a trail of debris left in space, by the Swift-Tuttle Comet, which swings past the sun every 130 years. So every 130 years, it replenishes this trail of debris. And that's made up of, of, of space rock as big as a meter across, down to tiny grains of sand. So each one of these shooting stars is, is one of these things. And it goes fast. Hundreds of thousands of kilometers an hour hitting the Earth's atmosphere, vaporizes, and creates what we see as a shooting star. And while it was on top of Mont Megantic, Sébastien Giguère did a great job of explaining it to me. He's the scientific and educational coordinator at Montmagantic. The Earth, in its trajectory around the Sun, uh, during the week between August 10th and 15th, the Earth is, you can imagine, we are crossing a river, a cosmic river, and this river is not made with uh, uh, with drop of water, but droplets of, of rocks, of little rocks, and so the Earth is is is, uh, is crossing that, that, that river, and so the, the rate of shooting star is increasing uh, a lot. So how far away are they? I mean, are they all hitting the atmosphere? Sure. So they, they, they're all about equi equal equal distance from mm -hmm. from the planet. That's a good question. In fact, uh, now we can. It, it was a mystery for a long time, but now we know that uh, these these cosmic grains are vaporizing approximately uh, 100 kilometers high above our head. But that's not, there's some variation because because depending on the size of the grain, maybe if it's uh, bigger, it can, it can penetrate more deeply in the atmosphere and so it can vaporize more uh, in, in a, at a lower altitude. And if the rock is uh, wide enough, maybe around one meter wide, it can even survive its atmospheric entry and then it can hit the ground and then that's when we will talk about uh, a meteorite and not only a meteor. So Mark just having listened to that clip I can tell that you're you're out at night so there you are on top of this mountain a lot of other people you can hearing them ooing and aahing in the background. This is organized by Sebastian Jigel and Astrolab so he he is the scientific coordinator of this organization, Astrolab, which is part of Momagantic, which is a provincial park. And the setup is actually amazing. Um, you get up to the top of the mountain, you're bussed up uh, 1,105 meters, as you said, the, the highest point you can drive to in, in the province. And on top of Momagantic, the mountain, there is another uh, installation, and it's a serious piece of scientific equipment. Mm -hmm. It's the 24-ton Momagantic Observatory Telescope. It's the largest telescope in eastern North America, and it provides research for astrophysicists all over the world. Uh, it was created in 1978, and that's before Momagantic turned into a park. And all along, this huge telescope has been maintained by a technician named Bernard Malenfant. Who then went on to found the Astrolab. What year was it again that he it, did that? It was in 1996. So I wanted to find out a bit more of that. I was with all these people. We're oohing and aahing at all these shooting stars. And I wander over from the public site. So I kind of wander through the woods. You get to this clearing, and there's this huge insulation, this domed structure with the 24-ton telescope poking out, looking at the sky. I rang the doorbell. Huh. Bernard Melenfant comes out. He gives me a tour inside the observatory and explains to me why, back when, he founded Astrolab. The first observing night that we had uh, 31 years ago, uh, we had 
all the newspaper talk of the big telescope in Quebec and everything, and that it was going to be open the first Saturday night in June, and there's over 1,500 people that drove up. In fact, I had to call the SQ to the, the police to come and uh, take care of the, all the traffic problems that we had in the road because nobody could pull out because all the cars had pulled up and uh, nobody could turn to go back down the mountain, so it was pretty crazy. And on that night, I told myself, well, it'd be interesting to have truly visiting uh, hours where people could come and visit during the day. Because if I wasn't working here, I would have been the first one to come and knock at the door and say, I, I want to look at the telescope. So uh, eventually, I had the idea of creating a visitor center, which is now called the Astrolab. And uh, there's over half a million people who came to visit Mount Megantic ever since. And it, throughout the world, I think it's one of the most visited telescopes. And the people in Quebec uh, truly love astronomy. So uh, we can see the attachment of uh, the night sky with the imaginary feeling of the people. And we see it again tonight with the shooting stars. There's you know, three, four hundred.